here, let's talk about the blue brand. Smackdown, SD Live, moving its way towards No Mercy. We begin with Bray Wyatt taking on Kane. Nice back and forth piece of match. But then all of a sudden, Mind Games. Mind Games. Played by, ready? Randy Orton. Randy Orton effectively does a Titan Tron bit upside down. At which point he then begins to lure Bray out. Bray reverses a couple of attempts from Kane, and then is like, do I keep fighting Kane for no reason? Do I look for Randy? He goes looking for Randy. So of course it means he loses the match by DQ. And by count turn. Randy sets a trap for him. The old rocking chair. Which then locks Bray Wyatt inside a shipping container. With a camera. Okay. Then after a while, Bray to teleport out. And Randy's like, yeah, I'm gonna... Dang it! Well, I got him Sunday. Good. I liked it. The crowd actually seemed to pop from the mind games, too. And I was like, you know, this is good. That's how you progress the, the storyline without them actually having to physically get into contact with each other. Love it. Great. Of course, I think also Eric Rowan's torn a rotator cuff, so it's not gonna be the... If only there was some other guy who's a big guy's connection to Wyatt. Oh, cannot think of his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't think of his gator rolling name. Oh. Anyways. Good, nice story for that. The Hype Bros took on the Vaude Villains. And Mojo Raleigh did his whatever he called oh, it's like double axe handle sit down drop and you know when you watch a bit and it's bad and even the crowd's like did he did he did... but even when Mojo said he was like I, I tried and then of course it's a pounce I, I love the fact he's doing the pounds. Oh, I marked so hard when it was Marcus Corvair. Oh, La Pounce. Such a great move. It's like, Pounce. Just, oh, I freaking love that move. Just looks so. So what you can do? I'm going to run at you, yeah? And I'm just going to blast you in the shoulder. You're just going to go flying off in a direction. That's the move. Hype Rider, one, two, three, but the Ascension came down to stare at him. Alright, the Ascension is doing more now since we drafted SmackDown. They did the whole, pretty much the whole year they were on the main roster. We'll finish up the tag teams. So, one of the Usos took on Jason Jordan. Jordan gets a quick roll of victory. Good job. They then do the we break knees beat down on the outside, but Slade and Rhino come down to a roarious pop from the crowd. Chase off the Usos. Because they got a match at No Mercy. Nice. Keep that tight. Get all the tag teams are pretty much involved in that. It's good. It keeps everyone doing. Everyone's moving. Liked it. It's good. Keeping with keeping everything moving. Alexa Bliss is taking on Nikki. Three matches you might want to wrestle again, so here I'll throw it. Come on, Nikki! <clears throat> and I've been dying for these two to fight each other. And I was like, I, I want you to I have, I have a few. The personality that Alexa Bliss has, the mean girl personality that Nikki Bella kind of had when she tried to go heal, but they didn't know if she was healed or face because they just big shorter the whole time. The personality that Alexa Bliss has is the the exact tailor made this is what Nikki Bella should have been. This is heel Nikki Bella just shrunk. This is this is a mini heel Nikki. Of course Carmel's on the outside and you know it's like, oh they're gonna screw Nikki out of this man. Oh Carmel's gonna jump Nikki from behind. Alright. Becky's coming down for the save. <gasps> oh we getting a tag match player? We getting a tag match player. Holla holla holla. 
sweet. And of course, heel chicanery. Carmella comes in, hits a hits her super kick. Not a bad one, super kick. A bad one. Twisted Bliss, one, two, three. Alexa Bliss pins the champion on the way to the one on one match. And Becky sells it like I could lose my title. And that's good. It's a nice amount of drama. And it's all just it's here. It's the official look. I close my belt. Slightly clutch it a little bit tighter. Loved it. Brilliant. I know on cage side seats, someone talked about you need white hat black hats. And someone else went through the whole you don't need white white hat black hats. You just need someone who's better than the person they're facing. But it's it's like it's, it's shades of gray. No, because if you go, well, he's a darker shade of gray. So he's the black hat. He's just not the blackest of black hats. He's a lighter shade of gray. So he's there's still a, a deviation between good guy, bad guy. Vince McMahon, Austin. Authority, Daniel Bryan. Sometimes it's really cut and dry. Nation Domination, DX. Then it gets muddled. NWO, all of WCW. But the bad guys, they're cool. They're still bad guys. <clears throat> I like that they got in the majority of women. Where's Natalia? Uh, she got her front two teeth blasted out of her face at a house show. They put them back in, but they're probably still like, mm, maybe it won't work this week because you lost your teeth. But I like how they got a lot of the women in. There are two that weren't on there. So they could have been on main event. So, but good. It worked. I liked it. They got through all the tags. Talk to Baron Corbin in the back. I love his, oh, God, what are you talking to me attitude. It's so great. He's like, Jack Swagger comes in and wants to get in my face. I'll put him in his place. So, Baron Corbin, why don't we do this right now? I do my talking in the ring. Let's get it. I'll find Daniel Bryan. Get the conversation in the ring. Whatever. So they have a match. Nice, big, young, hossy match. That was great. I love how... You get to hear the announce team talk about one guy, collegiate wrestler. Other guy, golden gloves boxer. Swagger gets an ankle lock. Corbin's reaching for the bottom rope. Ref's like, he tapped. And Corbin's like, What? I was reaching for the rope. Like it was like a legit reaching for the rope. He flips out and destroys part of the announce desk. Loved it. Like that's good. That's good. Quick. We're going to run all the time. Run all the time. And screw the heel. Screw the heel. Heel flip out. Perfect. Keep it going. Like it. I'm going to beat the facts. That Kurt Hawkins. I hope that gimmick dies a thousand deaths. I want him to take on a combination of Milwaukee's and Pentagon Dark. Or Dark Pentagon. I just... No. No. It's, it's dumb. Daniel Bryan got to do the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Here's Some Championship belt bit. It was fine. A buddy of mine on Monday, he was like, We just finished, like, Child Cancer Month. Now we're in Boob Cancer Month. It's like, yeah, they do you know, philanthropy a lot. It does seem, I hope it's not an every single week thing. I'm fine with them doing the behind the stage, you know, tape vignettes of here's my story, here's what I went through. It's just not, it's not in the ring stuff. Sorry. It, with Daniel Bryan, it came off nice with Enzo and Big Cass. It came off decent. But they try to work in their catchphrases, and no, no, if you're going to do these moments, don't work in catchphrases. Just do the moment. But you have catchphrases in the ring, that's why I think backstage stuff works well. Speaking of backstage stuff, so The Miz did a Dolphumentary, and they brought in the fact that he was Curran White's caddy, and the Spirit Squad, and it's, hi, I'm Dolph Zipper. Bit. And then it, the bottom fell out as they brought in the Spirit Squad. 
Kenny Dykstra, the guy they made the Spirit Squad for, who went nowhere. And is it Mikey? He was Mikey. They then had them spell out Dolph's name. Give me a D. I'll give you a D. I'll give you a D. Give me an O. I'll give you an O. I'll give you an O. L. I'll give you L. I was like, I'm like, oh, just stop it. I'm watching this on tape delay, and I'm like, they're not. Please don't be. Give me Z. Oh, I'll give you Z. No, 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 no. No. The crowd was like, yeah, yeah. Beat him down, Dolph. To Any Pokemon? See Pokemon? No. I'm gonna check Emma's Instagram feed. Oop. Yeah, take that, Snorlax. You're a low level. I'll transfer you. Use that candy to power my other Snorlax. Oh, there's a gym nearby. Apparently, someone made one of the bathrooms. Any focus stop? Man, this is still going on. And then, of course, they did a beatdown. And they tried to do their old Spirit Squad finisher, which is great. There's five of them, but with two of them, it was just bad. So the straight fire they had going into it, where I was like, yeah, this is a great little segment. Just went, oh. But how they cap it off? With a non-wrestling segment. AJ Styles in the ring. He's talking up a little bit. Dean Ambrose shows up like the burning fire of a thousand suns heat. It's like, D Dean, Dean, this was, this, this was the guy that we wanted when you had the belt. We wanted the fire from Dean, not the, um, it's cool as the other side of the pillow. Hey, I'm Dean Ambrose. I'm channeling my inner Lando. Yep. That's not, not what the fans wanted. They, they wanted the, the, I'm hungry, I've got this belt, you're going to have to kill me to take it from me guy. And he lost a soccer bomb junk kick. And then John Cena comes down, and the fact that Ambrose gets right in John Cena's face, you're, you're almost going, you know, AJ John Cena, sick match. But the promo is good. John Cena Dean Ambrose, that promo is amazing. I'm the establishment. Look at my amazingly square jaw. I'm jacked. John Cena. Versus, I'm here day in, day out, scratching, clawing, bleeding. You know that I fought Bray Wyatt in a random, here's your town street fight? It's just, and yes, he's wrestled more matches in the past couple years than anybody else has. He surpassed Sheamus. And that's great. The, you're a part-timer and you don't have it anymore bit. And then the fact that they all just began to whoop the daylights out of each other. And then it was like, ha, huh, I leave the ring. Or you don't leave in the ring, I beat you down outside the ring. It's good. Oh, that show's going to be amazing. I don't want John to win. I want them to push that off. I think if I think if they push that off, you then have Aegis out with somebody else for a little bit. Dean Ambrose and John Cena work for a little bit, unless Cena's taking some time off. <clears throat> you can have them work a little bit and then of course you go right into Survivor Series you can do a Team Smackdown Team Raw and you can have it be like John Cena and Ambrose instead of Cena Ambrose and someone else on the opposing side Ambrose turns on Cena walks away there's the count out guy pins John Cena clean in the ring just make it work put those two guys in a slight blood feud they can either do a tables match or a chairs match and then you have John Cena come back in WrestleMania, win that, and then have him decide which side he wants to go after. He decides to take on AJ Styles in the main event of WrestleMania. He can win, he can lose, does not matter. Because it'll be the main event of WrestleMania, and it'll be AJ Styles. Perfect. Phenomenal. This show is good. They're actually, percentage they're not as much wrestling but the fact that they do 90% of what they're doing in the ring. And the stories are simple, they work well, 
except for the, the Spirit Squad spot died. It died hard. But that's because it's a bit that, unless you watch, my, my wife was like, who, who are those guys? Because she didn't watch Dolph Ziggler's Spirit Squad era. Dang it. I went to a house show with four friends dressed as the Spirit Squad. I was Ken. They saw it. They loved it. They talked about it on MySpace. That's how long ago it happened. MySpace.